I understand why sound bars are so popular. The mainstream home audio customer interest hierarchy seems to be good sound quality, but that's at the bottom. Then looks above that, the most important thing seems to be ease of setup and daily use. I think people have some residual stress from years of home theater systems that required like four remotes to turn on and operate it. And we're still kind of in it. Um, it's getting better, but I even still need two remotes to work my system at home. One for powering the TV and volume and my PS4 remote for streaming and navigation. Of course, that's for the long haul everyday use. But then there's setup. I personally get excited thinking about setting up a 5.1 home theater system, but I realize that excitement is shared by very few. Most people don't want to do any setup, and I can't blame them. Uh, it can get complicated, like really complicated. Soundbars solve a lot of these problems. They're an all-in-one piece of equipment, most with very few cables or plugs, and it's a huge upgrade in sound over your stock TV speakers. But is a smart soundbar worth it? Hey everyone, I'm Kirby. This is Kirby Meets Audio, and today we're gonna to take a look at the new Sonos Beam. There's already a lot of first look videos out there, but I've been using this guy for a little over a week, and I have some opinions. Sonos released its Beam soundbar last week at a price point that makes sense to a lot of people. At $399, it's no budget soundbar, but compared to its $700 older siblings, the Play Bass and Play Bar, if you're already drinking the Sonos Kool-Aid, $399 doesn't sound all that bad. The Beam is pretty small for a soundbar. At just under two and a quarter inches tall, it's not gonna block your screen. And just over 25 and a half inches long, it's probably gonna fit nicely on whatever you've got under your TV. It packs four full range woofers, one tweeter in the center, and three passive radiators to give it a little kick. The five active drivers are individually powered by Class D amps, giving them the ability for all kinds of digital signal processing magic. All right, let's start at the top of my made up consumer interest list with ease of setup and daily use. There's only two cables you'll need to set up your new beam, power and HDMI. The Beam controls your TV and gets sound from it using HDMI ARC. If your TV doesn't support ARC, voice control isn't gonna work, but you can still get audio and they even include an optical audio adapter if that's your thing. Setup was really simple. You just plug it in, download the Sonos app on your phone and follow the directions. The only hiccup I came to was I've never used ARC on my TV before. So the signal path confused me a bit. I didn't get any instructions through the app on how to hook up external streaming devices like my PS4 since there's only one HDMI port on the back of the beam. My natural thought is to go from the PS4 into the soundbar and then from the soundbar into the TV. But using ARC, you actually go from the PS4 into a non-ARC connection of the TV, then from an ARC connection of the TV into the beam. I don't normally think of my TV as a pass-through device, so this threw me at first. I think it would have been nice to get that information in the step-by-step -step setup procedure in the app, but it was actually really easy once I got the information I needed. Beam supports Amazon you-know-who. Uh, if your TV supports ARC and CEC, you can use voice commands like turn on or off your TV. Uh, you can also use voice commands to change volume or mute, and I think those work even on older TVs. If you have an Amazon streaming device like a Fire TV or a Stick, you can use all the voice commands you're used to, like asking to play specific shows or movies. I use Amazon You Know Who in my house. I have a few Echo Dots and an Echo speaker, so having it built into the Beam was actually pretty nice. But I did run into a few issues. You Know Who's reliability on the soundbar wasn't as solid as an actual Amazon device. I had a few connection issues and actually a few days before the end of my week long test, my internet went down. All my other You Know Who devices reconnected to the network automatically once it was back up, but not the Beam. And I'm actually still having trouble connecting to my Wi-Fi using the Sonos app. It just won't find my network. I, I don't know what's wrong. Another way to wirelessly connect to the Beam if you have an iPhone is AirPlay. Uh, I was really excited to use this for music because why would I want to use the Sonos app to play music via Apple Music when the actual Apple Music app is just way better. 
and Bluetooth can be a pain, having to reconnect every time I want to listen to music. But guess what? <laughs> I had to do that with AirPlay too. Uh, every time I wanted to listen to music on the Beam from Apple Music on my phone via AirPlay, it would make me reconnect to the soundbar. And it wasn't quick, taking just as long, if not longer, than Bluetooth. And sometimes it wouldn't connect at all. It would ask for an on-screen AirPlay code. So I would have to go back and try again. I don't know if this is an AirPlay problem or a Sonos problem, but it was a problem. And it's a problem no one has seemed to solve well yet. Actually connecting to my HomePod via AirPlay was always super quick and easy, but I wouldn't put it past Apple to somehow be keeping that ease of use to their own devices. I don't know. We'll talk more about sound later on, but I feel like I do need to say right now, once you are connected to the Beam, music sounds great on this thing. I guess I also have to say there are a few capacitive touch controls on the top of the soundbar to control volume. You can skip forward or back a song, play pause, and of course, the only one you really need, the mic mute button. Once I accepted the frustrations of those small issues, day-to-day -day use of the soundbar was really simple. There's no need to power it on, it just works, and you control the volume using your TV remote. All of the settings are handled via the Sonos app, though I didn't use that very much. But there is one thing, and this one got me the most. Whenever you pause something you're watching, or I guess anytime there's no sound going to the soundbar for a period of time, it lowers the volume to zero. And then you press play again, and there's a huge lag time for the volume to rise back up to where you had it set previously. I'm guessing this has something to do with hiss or sound protection, but it's a pain. And I should say I only tested the Beam with one TV, so maybe this has something to do with my TV. I don't know, maybe. You actually end up missing that da -dum intro thing every time you start up Netflix. So what I ended up doing was pressing play, then pause again really quickly, letting the volume catch up, then pressing play again. Now to me, this isn't a deal breaker. There has to be no sound for at least 10 minutes. And like I said before, it might be my TV. And it's a problem that I'm sure could be really easily fixed uh, in software, but it's still really annoying. I know that might sound like a lot of gripes uh, with everyday use of this thing, uh, but that's what's really great about internet connected products like this one. Um, as long as the issue isn't hardware, which I don't think it is, uh, they can all be fixed via software updates. This is a brand new product and Sonos does push software updates to their line every so often. I wouldn't not give this guy a chance because of these issues, if it fits your needs. Or maybe you'll use it differently than I did. Uh, you might love the Sonos app, uh, you be you. Okay, next up on my super scientific made up list, looks. I'm not so sure I have a lot to say about the Beam's looks. I mean, it looks great. It's minimal and sleek. And I really like that the Sonos branding is there, but it kind of blends into the fabric on the front so it isn't obnoxious. The rounded ends also make for a smooth, soft look that I enjoy. Uh, it also feels really solid when you pick it up. It comes in white or black, it's small, it should fit in pretty much any situation, and you can even get a bracket to wall mount it. One design feature that's interesting is the top is slightly concaved like a dish. Uh, I've heard other reviewers say this is a feature to keep the lights on top from shining at you in a dark room, but one of the lights is on the far side of the dish, which makes it shine at you more directly. So that doesn't really make sense. I'm pretty sure it's just a cool design feature. and I like it. All right, let's talk sound quality. This is a big one for me, probably way more than your average consumer, but that does give me a little bit of perspective to lean on. First and foremost, this is a soundbar meant for video and it does a good job at it. This doesn't by any means beat out a 5.1 system or even a center channel with stereo mains, but it's really not trying to. This is a compact soundbar meant for small to medium sized rooms where convenience or lack of clutter is most important. The truth is, unless you have a 5.1 system somewhere else in your home to compare this to on the daily, the consumer this product is meant for will most likely be really happy with its sound right out of the box. And as you listen to it every day, you'll get used to its sound signature and you'll just like it even more. 
The beam does sound decently wide for its size, wider than you might expect even. Using two outward facing full range drivers on the ends and some serious DSP, the stereo presence of the speaker is in full effect. And for such a small footprint, the bass is there. It's not going to be shaking down any walls during an action film. You can add the $700 sub if that's what you want, but I honestly don't think you'll need it. The passive radiators do their job well and tune the speaker down to below 50 hertz. The one tweeter does a good job, but the sound can be a bit muddy at times. I think this has more to do with the audio quality of whatever show you're currently watching, but I did find myself turning up the trouble in the Sonos app to balance this a little bit better, uh, which is actually a great thing to be able to do. Getting huge bass from a small package always seems to be the goal, which is a fine goal. I strive to do this with my own builds, and it's very noticeable in this case while listening to music, which sounds great through the beam. Deep and full, it's obviously designed for great casual listening while hanging out or doing stuff around the house. The beam is perfect for the right person. Sure, you can find sound bars for cheaper and maybe they'll sound almost as good, but if you're looking for ease of setup, this small sleek look, smart assistant, and great sound with both music and video, you might wanna consider the Beam. But I think who this product is really for is for people who already have Sono speakers in their home. The Beam fits really well into their ecosystem, which is something we didn't even really talk about, but if you have another Sonos, you already know. Or for people who are looking to enter the Sonos ecosystem and plan on purchasing multiple speakers. Whole house audio. Sonos definitely does it the best so far. All right, if you're interested in building a pair of speakers of your own, head over to kmakits.com where you can find free build plans and complete kits for purchase. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up. If you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down. Just make your feelings known. If you're new here and you like this video, hit that subscription button. Then hit that little bell if you want updates on when I post videos. I also have a Patreon where fans like you help me make videos like this one. And if you want to see the behind the scenes of making videos like this or my speaker building or just my life in general, Hit me up on Instagram. You can click the link in the description, doop doop, or uh, search Curvy Meets Audio. All right, that must be. It was pretty cool. See you guys next time. Mike.